let's talk about the start of Maven. Where'd you okay. get the idea? And then I want to go into where'd you get the funding? So, um, so I had been playing around with different ideas um, when I got back from B school. Um, and this one sort of came out of left field where someone in my family who was a hairstylist asked me if I could get some hair extensions from China for her. And uh, so I was like, all right. And at that time, that's the guy I was. Like everybody that knew me, which is always the club, he asked me, what could I get from China? Right, I was the plug. So I, I hooked her up, I got some samples, I brought her back, she was like, that's dope. And I brought some of those samples to some other salons and they were all just like, yo, can you give me some more? And like literally I was just like pulling up to the salon and I'll just like walk in with like two bundles in my hand and be like, I got hair. And then they would just like rush me, you know, at, you know, at the, at the door. And, and really it started because I was in this mindset where, mindset where I'm trying to figure out what business to start. I need, I need to have some income, some basic level of income, but I need to get it in a way that doesn't take up all my time. Mm -hmm. And so then when people started asking me for hair, I was like, oh, well, this is easy because I can make like a and five, four, five hundred dollars a day. Just just pull up to a couple salons and just get it off real quick. And so I ended up just doing that and putting bundles in the trunk and just driving around, spend like two hours driving to the salons, get out, hop out, sell some hair. And then I was free for the day and I could work on stuff. And the more I started doing that with this new framework now from like I had went to B school and I'm seeing things now from a much bigger top down perspective, I started to see something way bigger. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of people uh, describe Maven as a hair extension business. And that is never what I ever intended Maven to be or the way that I thought about it. Hair extensions are not the focus of the business, even though we sell hair extensions, right? Outside so, looking in, yeah, I know. I look at it as a distribution network. Yeah. It, 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 so I don't know where you're yeah. going, but I, I can just tell you, yes, I've heard it described as a hair extension business, but yeah, what yeah. you have built feels more like an incredible distribution, distribution yeah. network. Yeah. yeah, and that was what I came to solve. What I saw was, there's six billion dollars of these products being consumed by us. They don't sell it in the hair salon where the stylists are doing the hair every single day. It's sold across the street at the Korean beauty supply store. The customer goes and buys it herself, brings it over here. Stylist doesn't make any money from the product. But and you just one better, middle one better before you go. Yeah. Not only does the stylist not make money from the product, but they're referring. The they're client. referring. They're telling what to get when you go. And so I just see this middleman sitting here, and they buy the hair from China. They're Korean, but they buy it from China. So I'm like, I could get it from China, and she should be the one who's selling it because she's already got all the customers. I love this. So Ooh. what I saw was a distribution problem, not a hair extension problem. And for me, if I could move, hair extensions would be the cornerstone product that we would build this thing on. But once the channel is built, we can move any type of products. And we can move hair care products and tools and, and, and all these other things. And so that's what I saw, and that's also why it was a technology business. It was about building distribution. It was about building a platform and a network that could be leveraged to build businesses on, on top of. And so that was the, that's what I saw. And so yeah. you're seeing this. And again, yeah. I want to walk through this slowly mm. because I, I, I y your company is wildly successful do you get this vision 
from the street level, you're still going hand to hand, door to door, dealing with the stylist? Or is it over a certain period of time that you come to understand this is much bigger? This is, this is not just, I get it, it's not just here, it's more of a distribution, but this is nationwide, global. Um, no, I got it. I, I knew it at the street level, right? Now, yeah. remember, now remember, like, I had just spent the, the la like, the previous eight years doing international and global business. It was like, it was hustle level, but I saw these things and I saw like big systems. And then I went to business school and I was looking at systems. I was looking at systems and corporations and networks and understanding network effects and SWOT analysis and, you know, like uh, much more sophisticated ways to look at the big picture. So, and that's what like, you know, when I did an MBA, it's more, how do you think big picture? And so it was reverse. I got that sort of like mind frame. And then I went down to the street level and I saw what's happening at the street level and said, this just doesn't make any sense. This system is broken. This, this system can be fixed. And I understood the size of, of, the, of the problem. Right, because I understood that it was like six billion dollars of hair extensions alone, ten billion dollars of just black hair products, and the same model could be applied outside the African American community. There's no reason that it would just have to be. So, correct. Right. So, so that's what I saw, and so that's what sparked. Okay, this is something that has the scale, size and is perfect for me to do, which is a really, really important part of my decision to go down this, this path, which is that um, a lot of people, I think they look for opportunities outside of themselves. So they're like, where's a hole that needs to be filled? But you have to match that hole, right? So like, it's almost like, the hole is like a puzzle piece uh, or an empty puzzle piece space. And you have to fit into that. So this business is half supply chain. It's dealing with China. It's import export. These are things that I understood. These are things that I had experience with. So I had an advantage there. And so that's why I chose, like, that's why I also, um, that's why I decided to, like, just go hard into it. So Before you go further, got a question for you. Yeah. You 100% had the skill set, the experience, the background to get this business off the ground. In your words, yes, there's an opportunity there, but your experience fit. Yeah. Did love, passion, any of that stuff fit into your decision making? Were you loving what you were doing at this point? Or was this strictly opportunity that I'm tailor made for? It was love and passion were definitely part of it. So first of all, I get passion from like the way I think about it is like, I, I like I like puzzles. I like these are games to me. I like untying knots. I like figuring out, you know, stuff. Like I'm passionate about that. And then business is all about that. Now, and I'm also a, I'm about like making money. I like to make money, right? That I, and there's nothing wrong with that. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.